two, one. Wait. Stand up there. <laughs> and go. Are you sure? I think so. Are we live? I think so. Hi, folks. Sorry. We, uh, just to tell you real quick what's happened. Frick rolls in here at 5 after the hour. No. No, actually. 5 after the hour sometime this afternoon. A uh, whole bunch of new equipment, and he's been uh, working ever since trying to get it hooked up and get all the bugs out of it. So hopefully everything will go nice and smoothly. Apologize for being late. But we'll make it up to you, give you a good session. <clears throat> Ken's here tonight, live and in session. And if you look over here to my left, where there's been an empty chair, it's now occupied. The moose has survived. And a uh, special announcement, we have a new... We have a new family member as of two days ago? Yesterday. No, no we're not born no yesterday, Thursday. day before. December 2nd? Yeah. Megan and Jake had their first boy, first baby, and they named him, I kid you not, Little Moose. Well, so Moose's Moose Moose first, Moose Moose first name is Bruce, and his son, who couldn't pronounce, I don't know, couldn't pronounce? No, it just rang. Oh, it just rhymed? It's, it's Dr. Seuss stuff. Does that, does that get credited to, uh, to Sean or to Jay? Uh, I don't know. I think it was a team effort. Yeah. Anyway, so he's been affectionately known as Moose ever since. So um, Jake named uh, his little boy after Bruce, and also a good friend of Jake that uh, passed away was killed several a few years ago. So his name is Bruce Ryan Cosman and will be known as Little Moose. He's got a little tiny footprint. So, special hello to Megan at home. I'm sure she's watching. What else is on TV? Yes, she is. Yeah, I think we have another little guest here tonight. He usually models the uh, happy sweaters. I don't know where that is tonight. And isn't he so handsome? Oh, he is a handsome boy. That's <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> and uh, who else is... Uh, Luther's out in Seattle. We have a very special guest on tonight, Ernie, who's going to be... Oh, and Bentley, thank you. Ernie's going to be uh, talking about... Are going to be working with me on the main topic for tonight. Um, I'm I woke up Super Dave, so he's on too. Oh, Super Dave is here, yes. Super Goat. goat. Super Goat. And uh, I think I have four very special guests on. Jeff, Bob, Kevin, and Danny. They know who they are. I'm going to introduce two of them. I got two bios to read for you tonight. Special program, special something we're ju we just started doing last week and a half, and uh, I want to share it with you because you guys, I know you're all supporters of the Purple Heart Project because of uh, the way you donate money to help us f finance it. The plan going forward is that we're going to do our first class in April, if this current uh, situation situation. Yeah, ever calms down. They, ga they gave us our marching orders today. New rules in effect until spring. Don't go, don't go there. Um, what else? We uh, Any more announcements that we're missing? I'll think of them as we go. So, Ernie, uh, how, uh, do I need to be over there to hear Ernie? Uh, you would, yeah, they can hear him, though. They can hear him? Shoot. Can I get tuned in on my phone so I can hear Ernie? <coughs> then you're delayed. Yeah. Okay, so um, actually I wish I had Luther doing this, but Ernie, uh, Luther met Ernie. They both live in the Seattle area. Oh, probably six months ago or a year ago? Maybe, I, I think maybe even known, a year ago. I think he's known Ernie. I don't know. If anyway, one, uh, Ernie uh, has a little business, and his uh, I think it's a hobby as well, is restoring old braces so in case you don't know what that is it was referred to as a brace and a bit so mine is over <laughs> here this is being replaced i got to send this back to ernie in fact i'm going to bring it out so that uh, i can get it ernie's going to restore it and i've got a drill in here an egg beater drill that if you've watched any of my videos you've always heard me complain because there's a spring missing in there so the three jaws don't come together evenly and always throws the, uh, it always throws the bit slightly off center. So those are going back to Ernie to be upgraded. I also need to mention that uh, my wife isn't, my wife 
got a little crazy on the decorations, but it is Christmas, so I'll thank her for that. Um, so back to this, a brace and a bit. This is the brace, and in here are the bits. These are some original, well, I say original, Irwin bits, and they even... New, new old stock. Yeah, they even came with the uh, manual on there, and I think it was 1950... Oh, no, no, it's 1939. Started of World War II. So this is your... See ya. Thanks for telling me. So this is your bit. Now, in case you uh, you didn't know, you see numbers on them. So those are sixteenths. So this one has a number eight. So eight sixteenths would be half an inch. And you would take that out and it had kind of an odd, maybe Ernie can share with us why that was like that. And then you'd wind that in, snug it up, and then you would go ahead and it, it has a self-feeding screw on there to help pull it through the wood. I'll demonstrate it tonight on something. But Ernie recently sent me, which I was most appreciative, three, three of these, and they're in a series. I think I explained this last time. So this is a 10 inch, an eight inch, and a six inch. So it has a much smaller radius for in tight circles. But they also have, um, you, can, you can make it so that you, you turn, um, a ratchet. go this way, a ratchet. So if you can't go all the way around, you could, you could go part way, come back, get you in a tight spot. Get you out of a tight get spot. Get you out of a tight spot. Yes, you got yourself into the tight spot. Also got some other things to talk about tonight, too. Don't let me forget to talk about that. So let's go over to Ernie and take a couple questions. And then how's our audience tonight? Uh, Tired? We are at 4.11 right now. Where's, uh, where am I going to be to hire Ernie? Uh, over here. You'll be able to hear him. Okay. Ernie, where are you? Ernie is, is on. How's Seattle? Rainy and cold? It is, I, I, yeah, it's rainy and cold, that's for sure. How about you guys? It's just cold. Just cold, huh? Just cold. It's December. Yeah, my grandfather actually was from up your neck of woods. Well? I don't know. What, uh, we got any questions coming up? Yeah, I'm just getting fricked to pull one up. All right. So um, the, uh, just a second, i got to undo my one. Okay, so, so the, the first question, question comes right, from. Right, right. <laughs> I've got I've got the uh, I've got a laptop with the uh, okay. with the program going, and there's a lag. So if I if I'm listening to the program, uh, I I might speak out of turn. Okay, well, I'll speak slowly. Read us the first question for. Yeah, okay, okay so, so the, the, the first, first question, question comes from Michael Grinney in St. Augustine Beach, Florida. Hi, Mike, in Florida. I'm envious. I've, I've never been, been able to properly sharpen a drill bit. Is it even worth it? You want to take that one, Rob, or do you want me to do it? Um, I'll go over and do it, and then I'll come back over and get your comments. How's that? That sounds good. Okay, so if you come over here, which camera are we on? Only one. We only have one tonight? Yeah. So, I'm going to find somewhere in here my little cache of files. I have a bit uh, file specifically. Uh, maybe over there. Where? At the, uh, what's it called? No, right here. For filing these bits. I'll take a, a big one out just because it's easier to see. Why don't you do one of your... Those are never used. They don't need to be sharpened, do they? Yeah, they, 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 they're used. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm going to get a Sharpie. And I don't think... Ken, have you got a, sharp, a, a new Sharpie? Yeah. Mine that I dug out the other day had to throw away. It was all dried out. Yeah. If you would, please. Where Are you going to the vice? Well... Now, I've got my little vice right here. I'm going to try that just to make it easier than having to go over there. I, I want to highlight with a uh, Sharpie what I'm going to do. 
so that you can see it. But I'll, point, just I'll point, it? point it out. So <clears throat> there's two cutting lips and there's two, I don't know what you call these, but they score the wood. So when this screw is pulling into the wood, you want these cutters. Oh shoot, Ken, I was asking you for a, you know, a big one. I felt like you I know, felt one. You know, the one where you can paint a surface. Oh, I don't have a new one though. Uh, Gina might. So you want these to touch first. And what they'll do, they're sharpened like a knife. They'll go around and they will score the perimeter of that circle. And then these cutters will come in and they'll excavate Which that. Which ones? This one, okay. oh, sorry. So this cutting edge right here and the opposite side, this cutting edge right here will go in and they will score. Score. Pardon me. They will ex scrape excavate. Out. No, not they're not really scraping, they're cutting. Mm -hmm. They'll excavate that material Perfect. that is relatively easy to remove because it's already been scored. So you know what it's like when you uh, score a piece of wood across the grain and then remove that short grain, it comes off quite easily. So the areas that need to be addressed are right here. And this is the surface that we'll work on. You never want to touch anything on the outside. If you touch anything on the outside, you're going to lose your one inch diameter. But you may also, if you ask, if you were end, ended up touching that outside and bringing it in a little bit, now you don't have the clearance you need and it's just going to jam on you. So you only work on the inside. So we're going to work that surface. We're going to work this surface and I just put my magnifiers on so that I can see a little better. And then we're going to go in here and address this surface right here. Yeah, you're painting in the ori... And this surface right Whatever here. you're painting is what's going to be filed. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm just wondering if they intend to do this back part. I think they do. Now let's just figure this out for a second. If we change up here, we change the cutting angle. If we change down here, we don't because it's the relief. So I'm going to go back over and ask Ernie because I think this is actually the surface area that should be should be filed. But I'm going to I'm going to bow to his expertise and find out. So Ernie, I'm coming your way. <clears throat> Ernie? Yeah? You file the bottom side or the top side of that lip? Oh. You file the bottom side of the lips. Is it, wait, just you a second. You file the bottom side of the flutes. The flutes are the little horns that come up parallel to the screw. Yeah. Stay a on the end. A couple of other little points to talk about. Remember that a bit is, is not like a, a brace. It, once you filed it and filed it so many times, you, all you can do is throw it away. So you really don't want to sharpen it any more than necessary. Another thing to keep in mind, hey Rob, could you uh, could you show them the, your your auger bit file? But, yeah, um, Can you rotate your camera there, Ernie, so it's horizontal? Horizontal, that yeah. way. Yeah, Can you show them your auger bit file, Rob? I'm going to ask these young guys to be really quiet. Hey boys. Well, I, I, I'm it's gonna be real quiet, here, okay? So what I'm watching on my uh, Watch what I'm watching on my monitor works. is about seven seconds slower, so I don't know if you're showing it or not. I can hear him. But the trouble with the auger bit files that are made today is they're too thick for the old bits. Mm. So what I normally do is I get people to use what's called an ignition point file for bits that are under number seven. So that how small is I that? Think I, I, I sent you, I think I sent you an ignition point file a couple of months oh, ago. Oh, yes, Rob, yes, you did. But you want, to, you want to sharpen the flutes with an ignition point file when they're really small, otherwise you'll ruin the pilot screw. Right. So it's just a small, flat file, but it's thin so that you, so that you, you can get in there. Now, here's what he's talking about. There you go. Jake. Are we back, Frank? What you want to do is use that pilot screw for the flutes only on small bits. Yep. Uh, they're a little bit flexible. Are we, are we on? Yep. 
Oh, sorry, Aaron, we lost you for a minute. Did I Rob? We we lost you for a minute. So let me let me catch up. So using this auger bit file, you see I have no problem getting in here and and addressing that flute. That what are you calling it? A fluke? No. Yeah, the flutes are those little horns that come up yeah. parallel to the screw. But I can't. And then that little part underneath it between the flute and the screw is called a lip. I can't get in this one with that file. It's just way too big. Now, Ernie's talking about I'm gonna, a... Uh, I'm, holding up a I'm holding up a bit now. Okay. I have... I don't know. I don't know if you can see it or not, because, like I say, I'm on a leg. No, I, I can't see you. We're in different right sides here, of the room. We got to be real that descriptive. That is called the. Uh, that is called the uh, flute, and then the little part you marked underneath. That is called the lip. Now you asked a question a while ago. Do you sharpen below or on top of the lip? You sharpen on the bottom of the lip, the back side of it. Right. Okay, so now on the flute, you sharpen on the inside, otherwise you'll change the diameter of the bit. And then another thing you want to have in your kit is a nice wire brush to clean your pilot screw out. Can you get his food on my TV? Nah, like I got a card file, but that's just, just for cleaning the file. I've got Something a little like tiny. This, just to get that a good cleaning. I've got a small file for filing Japanese saws, which have our multifaceted, very long, narrow teeth. And I could get in there and do that with that file as well. But let me do. Let me do this one. On the other. I'm, uh, on the vice. I'm going to go over here on this vice, and we'll go in and sharpen that. So the first thing I'm going to do is the lip. I wonder if this will hold that firmly enough. I don't think it will. So, practice on your neighbors. Always helps. So here's what we want to do. This is, this is where the teeth are. So I'm going to go in here, just match up that angle. By painting that surface, you can tell where you're removing material. And like Ernie said, when you run out of lip, you run out of bit and you throw it away. So don't go crazy with it. That's plenty, isn't it? And then I, was, I want to feel that it's nice and sharp. I can still see an edge up here on the top, so. And don't be afraid to go back in. That's the backside anyway, that's not important. Don't be afraid to go back in and Paint that again so that you always know where you're actually cutting. Okay, now I'll spin that around. And of course, you don't want to get one, one, uh, what do you call it? Not a horn. Flute. One fluke longer than the other. Not that you would get them out of whack that bad by hand filing. And by the way, if you look at this file, <clears throat> there's teeth here, there's no teeth there, so that I don't end up digging down in here when I'm stroking. This one, you have teeth here, and it's safe out there, so. Ernie, did you have a good Thanksgiving? Say what now? Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? Well, I've got Scott here. I'm going to have him show you what I use. I see you using a vice. Yes, if you had a nice Thanksgiving. Oh, did I have a nice Thanksgiving? Yes, I had a wonderful one. I was, I was actually with Scott and his hey. wife and son. Hi, I'm Scott. Hi, Scott. You interpret for me for Ernie all night, would you? I will. Scott's okay. prettier than I am. Not by much, though. So here's the here's my black area, and you you have to make sure that you always have clearance on this. I don't know if you could ruin that or not, but what you want to remember to do is not not file it too much because once you file it down to about halfway, your bit is useless. But you want that edge to be sharp. I'm trying to not hit that 
It's the back side, so I guess I don't have to worry about it. I would like to have kept that all flat. Somebody has filed this before me, and and they've got. Uh, Okay, so I can tell with my finger that I've got a, I've got a sharp <coughs> edge. Should you have done this first? What? The flats. Well, I'm I'm hitting the backside, so it's not. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm looking about thirty seconds ago. If you use the flat side of the file, you might have better luck on the flute. What did he say? The flat side. The flat side of the file. Yeah, I was. If you notice an auger bit file, they have a safe face and they have a safe edge on opposite ends. And the, oh, the reason they do that? that is to keep you He's from damaging it. the part of the bit that you don't want to file on. Now this has been, this has hit something. Rob, you want to file the other side of the lip. The, you want me to file the top side? No, no, no. File no, the that, I, that, that, I wasn't. I, that's what I was doing. Was filing the bottom. All right, no, no, no. The fi you're filing the lip. You should file the, the part of the lip that's away from the on the other side of the uh, screw. Oh. See, we're having about 30 seconds or maybe 35 seconds of lag here, so it's... I'm going to see if it'll cut wood. What you're doing How's right that? That's, yeah, the back side is what you should be filing. I think that's what I was doing. I'm going to... Uh, you see, that's what he was doing. Yep, okay. There you go. That's about a four-minute lag. Come on down here and file longer bits for me, Rob. What? Here, I'm going to... Um, all right. Give, give me a second here. I'm going to uh, use a longer cord, and I'm going to put my phone right on the bench so uh, you can hear him a little better, and he can hear okay. you. Can, can he hear me? Is the audience hear me right now? I'm just going to go yeah. ahead and do what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm going to use my... Ernie, I'll call you back. My 8-inch. Okay. Why? Just so that I'm, I'm lower. Why don't, you use it? Why don't you try the 6? Go for a substantial difference. Oh. See if it's any... I don't want to. Clearly. So... That's gonna bust my knuckle. Mm. Should've gone with the six. So whenever I do this, if I can put this vertical so that I can hold it like this, and it just put the piece vertical. Well, I mean, if you're the piece if vertical. you're trying to do it like this, your arm you're just swinging all over the place. So I do it like this, and I can. <sighs> What's happened, Frick? Oh, Frick just hit one of the uh, marking gauges. Chisel. Oh my word. Oh, he was cutting the. Uh, oh, you tried oh to cut word. it? Uh oh. How bad? Well, that bad. Oh, it's to the bottom. <laughs> Are we going to have to call it, folks? Want to get it? Here, never mind that. Just <laughs> Let me see. Oh, I can't feel my, my finger. finger. Let me see. Oh, yeah. That's bad. All right, we're going to call it. Um. Can we end off, Rick, without you? Um, it's live. Yeah, just keep going. <laughs> That's gory. Well, let's have a little safety lesson here. I don't know what he was doing. He was cutting the zip ties. Yeah, and well, he was Look probably holding it. Oh. Look at the chisel. Holding it like that and ended up going into the base of his finger. Holy smokes. Now they're going to panic. It's, um, it's not funny, but Rex got his finger caught. Rex managed to get his index finger between a square piece of wood turning on the lathe and the tool rest two days ago, and he munched his finger. Erica was preparing dinner one day this past week, and she sliced the end right off of her finger, just beyond the bone. So Frick, not wanting to be outdone, all right, so let's, let's come back to this. 
As I was saying, if you're trying to do it like this, it's very difficult to keep it stable. I mean, you can anchor yourself a little bit, but it's hard. I find if you can put it in a vise like this, where you can hold it secure. I mean, my feet are spread apart. That cuts through nicely. You're on the wrong side of the seat, Jake. Oh, I'm gonna see a breakthrough. Thanks, Ken. You an EMT? You are night. Bad, Erica. Yeah, so we're good until something screws up, right? No, we're not good. They can't see Ernie at all. Ernie's not even on air. Oh, that's oh. right, because Brett cut him off. Yeah. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to wing it. Well, let's get let's get uh, some of this other stuff taken care of. How, how are we gonna get the questions? Can't. 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 Well, no. I no, haven't. Luther can. How's Luther gonna ask any questions though? So what you're telling me is. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, folks. I hate to do this to you, but due to uh, a bloody mess, we're not uh, gonna be able to finish tonight's. Mess. Frick's our, uh, Frick's our key man to pull all of this together, and he's on his way to the hospital to get his finger stitched back on. So we'll be back next Saturday night, right here. See you. Can we even shut it off? Well, I can, but I'm holding the camera. <laughs> this is new. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you get it?